Now, I have a copy of Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle right here. I wanted to test something with it. I wanted to test something that was quite a hot topic when the Switch released. So these are the Switch cartridges. And when it came out, there was something flying around the internet that these actually taste like shit. Like they've got some sort of coating on them to prevent children putting them in their mouths. Apparently. So, what I wanted to do is test that theory and see if this actually does taste like shit. It doesn't smell of anything. But does it taste of anything? Shall we see? Yeah. They do taste kind of shitty. But it's not, it's not unbearable. <sighs> yeah, they taste, they taste what I imagine an antique shop floor to taste like. You know how an antique shop smells? That kind of old rustic wood smell, polished wood smell? That's what that tastes like. But it's not unbearable. It's not unbearable. You know, it, it's, it's short-lived. Kinda. Now. I've spent much of this short-lived YouTube journey of mine giving Nintendo and their their less than impressive business acumen in 2017 a lot of stick. I've called them out on not being able to manufacture the SNES Classic Mini and the NES Classic Mini to meet demands. I've called their timing of the 2DS XL fucking stupid. I've mocked that senseless Splatoon headset and I have adamantly stated on a fair few occasions that the Nintendo Switch came out six months too soon. Despite all of that though, despite all of that boiled piss I've been flinging in Nintendo's direction, I've always regarded the Nintendo Switch as the most innovative gaming device currently available on the market. And now, as the proud owner of such a device, I can finally confirm that fact. This thing, this tiny little thing right here is astounding. It's got more power than a PS3, more power than an Xbox 360, and more power than a Wii U, and I can fit the fucking thing in my pocket. I can play Skyrim, FIFA 18, Doom, and even Rocket League whilst gently squeezing out a poo on the toilet. It then even doubles up as a legitimate home console, providing a not too dissimilar experience from the PS4 or Xbox One. Put simply, the Nintendo Switch is an utter joy to behold, and it seems as if the wider gaming community echoes that sentiment entirely as they have embraced this device with open arms. But why? Why is this console so successful? What have Nintendo done different this time around to pull itself out of the sinkhole that the Wii U created? And yes, yes I know, these questions are quite loaded. You can literally write an entire book trying to fathom out the answer. But at the core of it, there seems to be three very crucial reasons that account for the Switch's success. The hardware, Nintendo's philosophy, and of course, the video games themselves. Now the most obvious of those three reasons, and the one thing which sets the Switch apart from its counterparts, is the hardware. Specifically, how the thing can be pulled apart and rearranged to suit your gaming needs. It is the first thing that springs to mind when you think of the console, and the first thing you excitedly show your better half when trying to convince them that you haven't actually wasted your money. Initially, that ability to switch between handheld gaming and home console gaming seemed like a typical Nintendo gimmick. Cool to begin with, but eventually brushed aside. However, this feature is designed so perfectly that completing the transformation between handheld mode and home console mode is something I find myself doing more often than I thought I would, and is a process that sometimes gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling in all the places that it probably shouldn't. Ugh. The console works astonishingly well in both guises too, bridging the gap seamlessly and becoming the hybrid device that PlayStation always wanted the PS Vita to become, except not shit, nor, nor abandoned, like thrown to the side. As such, Nintendo, the undisputed king of gimmicks, pushes past those gimmicks, resulting in a piece of hardware that's actually quite spectacular. But all of that is just scratching the surface of what the Nintendo Switch truly is, and that is a gamer's moist, slightly sordid wet dream. It is a machine designed exclusively for gaming, not only in its physicality, but also in the software that builds its foundation. The Switch's user interface is stripped back, sparse even, and at first glance something I took as a little unfinished. But then again, that is because I'm so used to seeing such cluttered UIs from the bigger boys in the industry. Both PlayStation and Xbox build machines that are supposed to be the only box you need to plug into your TV. For some time, that was even the exact messaging used to sell such consoles. Until Microsoft fell flat on its fucking face, 
playing that angle a bit too hard with the Xbox One. Even now though, after that multimedia approach was scaled back a touch and made less explicit, their intent to be the ultimate media device still underlines everything Sony and Microsoft do. The Xbox One's recent acquisition of a dedicated Spotify app and Sony's desperate attempt to make PlayStation View a thing are evidence of that fact entirely. And that is why the Nintendo Switch is so jarring. It is a modern day gaming device that doesn't have a YouTube app or a Netflix app. There's no music player and there's not even an internet browser. As such, this stripped back minimalist approach is refreshing and entirely revealing of that secondary reason for success. Nintendo's philosophy. A philosophy that is entirely focused around one thing and one thing alone. The video games. With the Switch, Nintendo has only concerned itself with delivering games in the best way possible. It has removed the roadblocks, cleared the clutter and distilled the gaming experience down to its most basic form with this device. But it has also made that experience flexible, allowing the player to enjoy their games in any which way they want. Games that thanks to their quality and Nintendo's apparent nurturing of such quality, leads to that third and final piece of the Switch's success. The, the games themselves, the, the video games themselves, obviously. The games. Obviously. The games. Themselves. As of recording this, there are nearly 300 Switch titles available in the Nintendo eShop. What is perhaps more surprising though, is that a good chunk of those games are actually good. Like, like really good, genuinely good. Except Sonic Forces, of course. That, that piece of shit can go and burn in the darkest depths of hell for all I care. Honestly, just, just just fuck off with that now. And the variety of what you can find there is yet even more telling of that game's first philosophy that Nintendo appears to be building this device upon. Games like ARMS and Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, you know, the, the one I licked, prove that Nintendo still have the capability to make some genuinely impressive new IPs. The presence of multiple indie titles like Rocket League, Golf Story and Stardew Valley shows that Nintendo has its finger on the pulse of the industry fully aware of where the quality lies. The polishing up and subsequent re-release of Mario Kart 8 and Pokken Tournament are telling of Nintendo's intentions to get all of its huge properties onto one console. Then there's the modern takes on those classic Nintendo heroes in the form of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey, titles that have all but secured a Game of the Year nod from multiple outlets already. Even that third party presence actually came through for Nintendo this time as well, with the likes of Doom, Skyrim, FIFA and LA Noir providing staunch evidence that those third party publishers may have some faith in this console. Ultimately, what this adds up to then is one hell of a video game device. A device that isn't just the most important console of 2017, but could quite possibly be the most important console of the past five years. And all of this because Nintendo has done something quite impressive with the Switch. They have supplied the hardware that has pulled off what many before it could not. They have supplied the video game software that represents not only itself, but the entire industry in its best light. And they have fueled this entire console with a philosophy that proves when games and games alone take priority, the resulting outcome can be quite something. So, there we go, my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch, seeing as I finally, finally bought one. So what do you make of it? What do you make of Nintendo's latest console? Do you think it is as impressive as I do? Come and let me know down in the comments below or over on Twitter at Daryl Does. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, my friends. Mm.